Our gospel lesson today is from John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. And Jesus is speaking. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. My friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us bow our heads together in prayer. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I recently saw a classified ad which read, Lost, one dog, brown hair with several bald spots, right leg broken, due to auto accident, left hip hurt, right eye missing, left ear bitten off in dogfight. Dog answers to the name of Lucky. Lucky? Of course this dog is lucky. For with all those things wrong with him, this dog is fortunate enough to have somebody who wants him, somebody who is willing to go to the effort to put an ad in the classified section of the newspaper to try to get him back. What a lucky dog he is. What a lucky person you are. For with all that other people might think is wrong with you, with your own feelings of disappointment and inadequacy, there is someone who cares deeply about you, someone who went to a lot more effort than putting a classified ad in the newspaper to find you. My friends, that someone is Almighty God. A woman who lives in a lone in an apartment building recently told me that she sets the alarm of her clock radio to a talk station so she will hear the sound of a human voice in the morning when she wakes up. My friends, people in our city are lonely and alone. Would it make any difference to anybody if you didn't get out of bed in the morning? Would it make any difference at all if you didn't wake up tomorrow morning? Well, my friends, it would matter to God. This morning's scripture readings concern our relationship with God, or I should say more clearly, God's relationship with us, for God is the initiator. In the first chapter of Genesis, we are told that God created humankind in order to have companionship. In a rural environment, King David looked out over the meadows and saw shepherds lovingly caring for their sheep, and he drew the analogy between this gentle image and the love and care that God has for people. My friends, there is not one working farm left in Cuyahoga County. Here in downtown Cleveland, green space is at a, medium, is at, at a minimum. And in the areas where most of us live, we are far removed from sheepfolds and the role of shepherds in the care and nurture of sheep. And yet all of us have seen enough pictures of a kindly Jesus holding a little lamb, that we get the idea this, that this metaphor is meant to convey. In John's Gospel, we find Jesus contrasting the mindset of a shepherd with that of a hired hand. Today, we might describe the shepherd as a small business owner. My friends, I know several successful small business owners, and the business owners I know are fully committed to their enterprise. Everything that counts in their lives is wrapped up in that business. I had a man tell me, my business means everything to me. They are wrapped up their dreams, their finances, 
their future, their time, all wrapped up in that work. You know people like that too. Jesus tells the disciples that he is ready to put himself in harm's way for their sake. His commitment to them is like the commitment of a small business owner in our day and time to that business enterprise. Jesus' life and destiny are completely intertwined with that of the life of the disciples. How meaningful to me, my friends, the story of the lost sheep in Luke chapter 15, where the shepherd risks life and limb to rescue one lost lamb. Ninety-nine are safe in the fold, yet so important is that one individual sheep that the shepherd ventures out, risking life and limb, risking safety for that one sheep. Yes, my friends, we are lucky because God is willing to spend all heaven's energies on one person, even if that one person is you, even if that one person is me. How lucky we are. How lucky we are. When I am preparing for a funeral or a memorial service, I always ask the family if there are favorite scriptures that they would like to have read at the service for their loved one. And the most often requested passage is the one that Audrey read for us a few moments ago, the 23rd Psalm. I am not surprised, for that Psalm tells of God's loving care for God's people, God's care for you, and God's care for me. Sometimes we think of shepherds as passive and mild-mannered people who don't do much but just keep an eye on their sheep, kind of the ancient equivalent of a security guard just kind of standing there and not doing much. But the role of the shepherd is not passive at all. Shepherds must be strong and resourceful. They must protect the sheep from the care, from the attack of wild animals. They must guard the sheep against robbers who might try to steal them. They must provide for the physical needs of the flock, food and water and protection from the elements and from predators. The 23rd Psalm celebrates the fact that God not only provides all these things for us, but God does so in lavish abundance. One of the commentators suggests that we make a list of all the things that we have received from God. Count your blessings, name them one by one, count your many blessings, and see what God has done. Reflect on these things with me, and you will see what this commentator is talking about how lucky we are. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The truth is we have a lot of wants, but God gives us everything we really need to live a full, free life. A recently published book documents the fact that the problem of hunger and starvation that plagues our country and our world today is basically an issue of distribution, not of supply. My friends, there is enough food in this world to feed every man, every woman, and every child on this planet. There is enough clean water for everyone. Our problem is one of distribution, not one of supply. God gives us what we need. Our problem is a lack of sharing of the resources that God has given us. I have heard people, I have heard an interesting reflection about the words, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Now, my friends, I do not believe that God causes illness, that God causes sickness, but sometimes God makes us lie down due to the fact that we are sick or exhausted and when we lie down, we instinctively look up. One of the side effects of COVID has been that some of us have been forced to slow down. Sometimes we have to be forced to slow down before we will stop and reflect. My friends, does God have to make you lie down in order to get your attention? And when we lie down, oh my, what beauty there is all around us. Have you taken the time this spring to marvel at the flowers and the trees that are now in full bloom? What green pastures God has provided for all of us when we take the time to look and to see. 
One of the reasons that the Bible continues to be a bestseller, despite the negative press that religion often gets in our world today, is that the Bible in general and the Psalms in particular are so true to life. Nowhere in this book is there a sugar-coated picture of our existence following the beautiful and idyllic and somewhat romantic verse about green pastures and still waters and God leading us in right paths comes the reality of death and the dark valleys. Into every human life will come tragedy and heartache and loss. My friends, it's not a question of if, it's only a matter of when. When problems come into your life and to mine, as surely they will, the psalmist declares, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I remember so well a woman I knew who had to travel as part of her job in the evenings and at night into dangerous areas, and so her two teenage sons decided they would help solve that problem, and so they went out and bought their mother an inflatable doll to sit in the passenger seat of her car so that it would appear that she was not alone. The truth is, she was never alone, for God was always by her side. If we follow the paths of righteousness and do what we believe God is calling us to do, we will find that we have enemies, no matter how much we try to get along and be conciliatory towards other people. When I was a district superintendent for the United Methodist Church, one of the most difficult things I had to deal with was the fact that some people, both parishioners and clergy alike, did not like me simply because of who I was and what I represented. Some people are uncomfortable when I walk into a room simply because I am a Christian pastor. Some people are uncomfortable with you simply because you are a person of faith and have the courage to say no to some of the excesses of our society. God promises us not only to sustain us in the presence of antagonists and enemies, but to lavish abundance upon us at the same time. He prepares a table to nourish and refresh us. Our cup overflows with God's blessings. When we are invited to God's table, we need to remember that we are guests, God is the host, and God invites whom God chooses. It is not up to us to decide who the other guests will be. How lucky we are, how lucky we are that God invites everybody, everyone that God has created, and that includes you, and that includes me. And then the psalmist reminds us of what we should already know, but continually need reminding of, that God will be with us, not just today when the sun is shining, when we have the world by the tail, but all the days of our lives, and even in the dark valleys and in the taunting of enemies and in all the other negative experiences we encounter in life. God will never leave us nor forsake us. How lucky, how lucky we are. Recently, I had a conversation with a man who said, my son has a good job, but he's not content. He wants to make a difference with his life. All of us need to feel that our lives have meaning and purpose. The 23rd Psalm tells us that God has a purpose for each of us. There is a reason why you were born. There is a reason why you are listening to this sermon. What does God want you to do with your life? The 23rd Psalm gives us a clue. God wants us to dwell in God's house all the days of our lives. In other words, by staying close to God, we will find the direction and the purpose that we seek in life. Not only do the scriptures encourage us to stay close to God, they encourage us also to stay close to each other. There is a popular heresy in our society today that proclaims that life the life of faith is a solitary thing, that religion is something between me and Jesus. In fact, some people would suggest that other people are actually a distraction to the focus of the things of the Spirit. 
My friends, nothing could be further from the message of the Bible. 20th century German theologian Karl Barth said, there is no such thing as an individual Christian. There is no such thing as an individual Christian. The faith was born in community and the faith is lived out in community. Have you ever thought about the fact that the word sheep in the English language is there is no singular, it is a plural word. Who we are is bound up with the entire flock, with other believers who believe with us, who break bread with us, who pray with us, with those Jesus knows and God loves, some of whom we have difficulty in bringing ourselves to acknowledge and welcome, let alone live alongside or give our lives to protect. Those who say they believe in Jesus but want nothing to do with other believers are simply misguided. They are missing a great deal of what the faith is all about. God intends that we live in community with one another. I repeat, there is no such thing as an individual Christian. Therefore, we must make every effort to reach out and to reconnect as this pandemic winds down and we see light at the end of the tunnel. Gathering and having fellowship with one another is simply part of what it means to be the body of Christ. Who is crying out for your love today? For whom do you need to risk life and limb? To whom do you need to reach out? Through the years, I have used a variety of resources for my daily devotions. One of my favorite books is a little book by United Methodist Bishop Reuben Job entitled A Guide to Prayer for All Who Seek God. In that book, Bishop Job tells the story of his family's encounter with a stray dog. Hear what he says. As I drove up the driveway, our children raced out the front door and met me at the car. Before I could get my suitcase out of the car, they were telling me about Puddles, the stray dog that had followed them home from the little store a few blocks away. Now, why do you suppose the dog was named Puddles? Three guesses in the first two don't count. We'd already talked nearly every day about the dog we were going to get when we were able to move out into the country. Everyone wanted a big dog, like a Dalmatian or a Black Labrador. But as I got out of the car, I noticed a dog that was small and scraggly, of mixed origin, very soon to be a mother, and very personable. The chorus of affirmation for the dog for our children was compelling. But I gave no clear answer to the question, can we keep puddles? I did not want to adopt a dog like this, and I knew I had to move quickly in order to make sure we did not have a dog and a litter of puppies on our hands. I suggested that after supper, we talk about what to do with the stray dog. When we were all safely settled in the family room with the dog in the garage, I asked each of the children to tell me why they thought we should keep puddles when we could afford a beautiful and large dog. Each of them had good reasons. She needed a home. We would enjoy the puppies. She would be a good watchdog. Last, I turned to our eight-year-old son and asked him what we should do with the dog and why. His eyes filled with tears, and he said simply, we should keep her. I asked him for his reason why, why we should keep this scraggly dog. He responded through his tears, because she loves me, because she loves me. Bishop Job writes, we kept puddles. She was with us when our children grew up, and when they called home from college and career, their first question always was, how's puddles? House puddles. The bishop reflects, she lived with us for 17 years because one little boy loved her enough to save her. 
My friends, somebody loves you enough to save you too. How lucky you are. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your love and care for each one of us. Help us to reach out with that same love and care to those in our families, our communities, and our world. This we pray in the name of the Good Shepherd who laid down his life for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to get the latest and greatest videos from the Old Stone Church. And if you feel blessed by our message, please go to the oldstonechurch.org and click to donate. God bless you today and forever. The Old Stone Church. We've been loving Christ and serving city since 1820.